Welcome back to Digital Trends Live. I'm Greg Nibbler. Hit that subscribe button. I know I say it a lot, but why not just take the time to go do it right now? Because we keep you up to date on everything going on in the world of technology. That includes entertainment. That's what we're going to talk about right now. It's time for real news. We've got our own Rick Marshall here. And Rick, I know it seems like every week we do talk about theaters and the state of those. And we kind of do have an update on that, I guess, this week. Every week, you know, we, we discuss these same things. It's making progress, I guess, towards uh, eventually, you know, getting back to normal for Hollywood. But uh, yeah, the biggest news right now is Disney has opted to send Mulan, one of its really big releases that was supposed to come out in uh, March and then in September. And now it is heading straight to uh, Disney Plus as a premium rental there. They're going to charge $30 to uh, rent it on Disney Plus. Uh, it's this is sort of breaking new ground for Disney because it's the first time they've actually charged you to watch a uh, a new release on uh, the the subscription service. And I think you know showcasing this like them finally making that decision because I know they pushed this back since I think yeah like you said like March or something like that. And for them doing this, do you think that they this could be a sign for some of their other movies? Because this one I'm not as as concerned about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I love those movies, so I want to see more of those. Do you think there's any? hope that they would do that in the absence of theaters well i think that they're going to wait until the very possible last minute <laughs> to make a decision on that front <laughs> because i think that you know it's very unproven territory right now with these uh these video on demand uh sent straight to streaming network releases uh, how much money they can feasibly make from you know the live action films like this as well so i think they're going to wait at least until there's more data out there uh, fortunately for disney and for marvel the black widow movie uh, the next you know marvel cinematic universe film that was slated uh, to come out uh, isn't really one of those movies that's set in a timeline that you know everything else has to come out after it or you know it comes out and sets the stage for everything else after it they can be a little bit more flexible with that film so i think they're going to wait until the last possible minute and i think that streaming uh sending it straight to streaming is going to be the last resort uh for disney because i know they want to send this one straight to theaters and i know this is one of those movies that people want to see in theaters so i think they're i think it's going to be a while before we get a real final final verdict on that one well going from that and uh into something else that we can watch now i know there's some new uh releases or shows that are coming out that people can take a look at yeah absolutely well uh, first up on it hbo max and hbo have an american pickle coming out uh this was another one of those films that was intended to go to theaters but then uh, with everything else going on hbo max is going to be releasing it straight to uh, uh you know hbo so it's a uh it's a comedy it's a sort of, you know, dramatic comedy um, with a sort of a silly pre uh, premise. Uh, Seth Rogen plays dual roles in it, and he plays a, a 1920s immigrant who falls into a, you know, a vat of pickle brine and is preserved and sort of wakes up in the modern America and runs into his descendant, his, his, his only living descendant. And basically, uh, his living descendant is also played by Seth Rogen. So basically, it's Seth Rogen acting against Seth Rogen, and they're sort of, you know, learning how to, how to live in the modern day, uh, you know, sort of a coming of age tale for the descendant and sort of a, you know, learning about modern, modern society and culture for, you know, his, 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 immigrant, uh, his immigrant ancestor. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous and I will watch it. So going from an American pickle, um, there's one on Amazon and I'm kind of curious your thoughts on this, uh, this Capone movie, because it's like it's not a traditional Capone version, right? And I know that you love uh, the mafia movies <laughs> after many conversations about this. So <laughs> I knew you were going to pick up on this one. Yeah, uh, Tom Hardy plays Capone. And uh, it is not the traditional, uh, you know, mob movie, as you said, it basically uh, takes place in uh, Capone's uh, twilight years. He, Tom Hardy plays Capone near the end of his life when he's living in Florida and you know, sort of suffering from dementia and all the associated issues that you know, come from living the life that he has, and, but also being this massive, iconic figure uh, in America. Uh, the film received rave reviews for Tom Hardy's performance. Um, it was released as a video on demand a little bit earlier this year. It was another one that was supposed to go to theaters, but then went to on demand. And, you know, the, the writing and direction sort of received some 
some criticism and such, but Tom Hardy's performance as the aging Al Capone, uh, everyone was praising. This one, this one was one that everyone loved what Tom Hardy did in this. And one of the coolest things about it, Tom Hardy isn't wearing a mask in this one. Um, we all know that he's famous for wearing masks in just about every movie that he's been in or not talking much. And this one, he gets to kind of flex those, uh, those actor muscles that he hasn't been able to, to flex in a while. Nice. Well, all right. Well, I'm still going to watch it because, like you said, yeah, this is up my alley anyway. So uh, Capone, <laughs> Amazon, August 10th, and then going to the documentary side of things, I do love behind the scenes like footage and just like how things were made. And that's what we're going to get, I guess, with Disney Plus with this other one. Yeah, this is a really special one. Uh, the documentary Howard hits uh, Disney Plus this week, and it's all about Howard Ashman, the the famed, you know, much beloved uh, music lyricist and producer for uh, for Disney's animated films over the years. He was responsible for some of the most famous songs that Disney lovers know, and anyone who's seen a Disney movie knows, uh, from The Little Mermaid, from uh, from Aladdin, you know, from Beauty and the Beast. Um, Aladdin was actually released uh, uh, after his death so you know there's just so many of these songs that are part of our part of any disney lovers background so this documentary explores a lot of uh you know his life and his legacy it also includes a lot of archival footage that's never been released before it's directed by his his uh composer and uh, producer friend don han and it's really going to be a trip down memory lane for for disney lovers i i really can't recommend it enough that sounds actually really great. I would definitely be watching that too. As always, Rick, you keep us up to date on everything going on in the world of entertainment. Of course, we've got it all at digitaltrends.com too. People can go and take a look at everything there. And Rick, I will talk to you next week. Hey, see you next week.